So we have talked about functions a lot and now it's moved towards OOP. So basically whatever we have discussed now is functional programming. So when you talk about functions, we have seen we can create functions, we can call them, of course that's normal, but then as a function, it can accept different parameters. We can pass numbers, we can pass objects, but what about functions? We have seen we can pass function to a function as a parameter. We have seen we can create a function inside a function. We have seen a function can return a function, but then all this thing comes under functional programming, right? Where the function becomes a first class citizens. On the other hand, we also have a concept of object oriented programming. And you might have guessed it right. In object oriented programming, the most important thing is object. So whenever you build application, if functions comes to your mind first, that means your mind is still into functional programming. And if you think about objects, your mind is more towards object oriented. And the beauty is Python supports both. It supports functional programming. It supports object oriented programming. But then when we can do everything with functional programming, why do we need object oriented? See, think about this. When you build applications for real life, you're trying to solve a real life issues. And whenever you try to solve real life issues, you have to understand in real Real life we use everything as an object so to solve any problem we think about an object example if i want to call someone i need a phone if you want to control your ac you need a ac remote if you want to record something your voice you need a mic if you want to capture yourself you need a camera right so all these things are objects now if you are trying to solve real life problems where we use objects don't you think in the virtual world where you're trying to build these applications even at that place you need objects and that's what you get in object oriented programming. So whenever you want to solve a problem, the first thing which should come to your mind is object. Now that's about object oriented, but you can also do certain things with functional programming. Both have different reasons to use. Now in object oriented, whenever you want to represent something, that representation will be done with the help of object. Example, let's say if I want to represent users, or if I want to represent employees, if you want to represent a human or maybe some physical things, let's say camera or all the gadgets you have. Now, this thing in the virtual world can be represented with the help of object itself. Example, if we talk about an uh, employee, our uh, employee will have a name, our uh, employee will have its designation, salary, location, home location. So all these things are the parameters for a particular employee. And also, employee has a behavior. They work. They chit chat, they gossip, they have tea. So those are the behaviors, right? Now, if you're trying to merge this, you can put everything in an object. So object has two things. Object knows something and object does something. Example, if you talk about this remote, this is a kind of remote for the light controls, but this remote has some properties, right? It's in white in color. This is the size of it. It got multiple buttons here. And then it has a behavior. I can control the background lights like this. It's not able to control now. So you can see those lights can be controlled with this. This is a behavior of it. So this is an object, right? So object knows something, an object does something. Now, question arise, how will you create the object? Of course, if you want to manufacture the objects, it can be a phone, it can be this kind of remotes, you have to go to a factory, right? So let's say if you go to a factory where you know they make remotes and you go there by saying, hey, I got this new device and I want you to build the remote for this. Now they will need one thing, which is a blueprint for the remote. Okay, so without blueprint, they can't make a remote. So even if you tell them, hey, I want a remote, they want to know what exactly you want. What are the properties of the remote? What a remote can do? So you have to mention the properties and a behavior. And you can do that in that blueprint. And that blueprint is called a class. So you have to provide a class to them and they will give you the object. In the same way, if you talk about Python or any other programming language, where you can do object-oriented programming, you basically create a class which acts like a blueprint and whatever the runtime of that particular language is, like Python, it will create objects for you, provided you give the class to them. So you give the class, they will give you the object. And not just one object. For a particular class, you can create multiple objects. And as your class changes, let's say when you got one class for the remote, you got one class for the phone. And when you give a phone class to them, they basically create the object for the phone. And not just one phone, you can have multiple phones, right? So if you want the object, you have to first create a class which acts like a blueprint. Now this class will have two things as we discussed before, a class will have properties and
and a class will have a behavior. Now, how do you give these properties? And that's where you can use variables. And we have talked about variables before, right? So example, if you get a class called remote, now you have to give some property, the height of this remote, the width of it, the color you want, how many buttons you need here, the size of the buttons, everything. And then you specify the behavior. Now behavior can be mentioned with the help of functions. Example, every time you click a particular button, what should happen, right? How this will, this particular light emitter here will send the signals, right? So all these things will be done with the help of those functions. So if you want to define the properties, you will do that with the help of variables. And if you want to define the behavior, you do that with the help of functions and you put everything in a class. Now we have a special name for these functions. So in object-oriented programming, we call we don't call them as functions, we call them as methods, okay? So now if I say, what is there in the class? A class will have variables and a class will have methods. But methods are functions. So you know how to create a function, you will know how to create a method. And object-oriented programming is not just limited to class and object. There are multiple things you can do in object-oriented programming. And I don't want to reveal the surprise here. Uh, let's see those things one by one. So we'll start slow. We'll start with class object and then we'll move towards those concepts. And uh, should we only focus on object-oriented programming, not functional programming? Uh, not exactly. So in every application, you will need both where for certain things, to represent certain things, you will need object-oriented programming. For some processing, you will need functional programming. So we'll do both. And yeah, that's about object-oriented programming. See you in the next part.